in simple terms, can you describe the insulin response? Sure. Insulin is a hormone, and it's secreted by an organ in our body called the pancreas. It's the only organ that can secrete this hormone. The pancreas sits sort of in an area called our retroperitoneum. It's behind our stomach. This is probably the most important hormone when it comes to how we digest food, how we uptake food into our cells, um, and how we regulate fat. When you eat something, it will stimulate insulin to varying degrees depending on what's in it. So carbohydrates stimulate insulin more than any other food, and even within carbohydrates, there are different amounts of insulin stimulus that result from it depending on the simplicity of them. Proteins also stimulate insulin, but to a much lesser degree, and fat doesn't stimulate insulin at all. So here's how it works. Let's say you take a bite of your cornflakes. Those cornflakes get into your stomach. As it exits your stomach, it enters the first part of your bowel. That's called the duodenum. And all of a sudden, it starts to get translocated and it starts to get absorbed into your bloodstream. So now we have to get it into the cells of your body because that's where you need that glucose. How does it get there? Well, that's where insulin enters the equation. So as sugar levels in your blood, and I'm going to use the word sugar and glucose interchangeably. I apologize for that. Glucose is a very specific type of sugar. And um, most people, when they hear the term sugar, they think about table sugar. If I'm ever referring to that, I'll, I'll make that point clear. But nevertheless, this glucose or blood sugar needs to now get into a cell. So the pancreas senses this, and it secretes this hormone called insulin. Insulin is a large protein, or what we call polypeptide. Insulin gets into our bloodstream, so it's systemic, and it interacts with cells that have receptors for it. And those cells have an insulin receptor. When that insulin peptide protein hits that receptor, it sends off a cascade of events within the, inside of the cell. And the most important part of that is it shoots something called a GLUT4 transporter. It's just a fancy word for a channel that inserts itself in the membrane of the cell and allows the glucose to enter the cell. And we need the glucose for energy. That's what creates the energy in the cell? Glucose is one type of energy, that, that one type of uh, product that we use to generate energy. That's correct. And here's the problem. When you don't have insulin, so some people may have heard of a condition called type 1 diabetes or juvenile diabetes. This is a condition where you have an autoimmune response and your immune system attacks the cell of your pancreas that makes insulin. It's called the beta cell. When people find themselves in this situation, what happens is they continue to eat food, they continue to have blood sugar accumulate, but they can't get it into their cell. So they effectively starve by not being able to have the glucose in their cells, uh, pardon me, in their bloodstream get into their cells. Well, as an athlete, I'm thinking, or just a person who wants to be fit, I'm thinking, you know, I want to use my fat for energy because everybody has told me that fat is the best energy source I can have for sustained activity. What does insulin do to my ability to use fat as energy? Well, you're absolutely right. For any type of activity that's what we would call aerobic, meaning where you have enough oxygen in your cells to actually harness the full energy, um, you're right, fat is a far superior fuel. The drawback of insulin is that when insulin levels are high, it promotes fat storage as opposed to fat breakdown. In other words, insulin is what we call an anabolic hormone. It promotes building, not breaking. And that has its role, but when it comes to exercising and accessing fat for energy, the name of the game is keeping insulin levels as low as possible. So for performance and also for body composition, in other words, lowering my body fat percentage, it's imperative that I control my insulin response. Is that correct? That's, that's absolutely correct. Furthermore, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that chronically elevated levels of insulin lead to a condition called insulin resistance. And what's not disputed at all in the medical community is that insulin resistance is the hallmark to a much broader condition called metabolic syndrome, which basically predisposes us to virtually every disease we think of that afflicts the Western population. So we're talking about heart disease, we're talking about cerebrovascular disease, obviously diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and cancer. Wow, that's very interesting. Thank you very much.